and me were sitting in a pew as a young man in my twenties, wondering what this place called heaven was like. I didn't get a lot of information from the religious world about the good things after resurrection. I had heard detailed and horrifying descriptions of hell. Oh, hell did I hear that information all the time. With a few more years and a lot of experience in my belt, I can now rest in the peace that the hell I had heard about as a kid was purely extension and embellishment from Dante, Milton, Jonathan Edwards, a slew of Roman clerics and pagan converts who carried over the, air quotes, best and the scariest images from the sources bathed in blood, sacrifices, and demonism. The Bible does speak clearly of punishment, but it's remedial. And three hells, uh, one, the cache of sinning angels from the flood, Tartarus, I think is how you say it. Uh, one is the abode of the dead, that's Hades, all the dead, by the way, righteous and unrighteous. And the last, I think it's the one most often spoken of by Jesus, is a valley named for its past owner, the son of Hinnom, Ben Hinnom, the Valley of Gehenna, where unclaimed corpses of the unloved, usually criminals, were burned, and incidentally, where many years before, pagan demon worshippers had offered their infant children as sacrifices. Sheesh! That's its own kind of messed up. Anyway, I don't want to talk about hell today. That's another topic for another day. Today, I want to share a few items I found out about heaven. What's going to be happening with us after the resurrection at Christ's return? What I've gathered, this sense I have, is that heaven isn't as much about the place, like Disneyland or Disney World, but more precisely, it's not so much the place is about the status and the activity we are given from God. I'm assuming a lot of things about your understanding of the future spoken of in the Word of God, so let me quickly, clearly state all the things I assume you know. A. Dead people are actually dead awaiting a resurrection. Nothing going on there. I did a video about these folks in What is Truth Season 1, Episode 4. B. Those who are Gentiles, non-Jews, call through God's pure grace because of the justification that comes through Christ's sacrifice, they'll be snatched up into the heavens, the celestials. C. Those who are Israelites, followers of the law, who know Jesus as the Messiah or who had a direct promise from God, they'll be resurrected to rule with Christ on the earth for a thousand years. That's the millennium. And then D. Those who are not given immortality when this current wicked age ends, and that's a lot of folks from that dead folks category, they'll be resurrected at the end of the thousand year reign of Christ. They'll be resurrected to live on a new earth, in a new heaven, to be judged by Jesus for their works, and either live for the last revealed age shown in the Bible, or they'll be destroyed in the lake of fire. That is until the lake of fire and hell and death are abolished, and God is all in all. What I just gave you was the content of a lot of videos I have not yet done. There are other people who have written about what's coming, and there are people who have done videos about it. If you don't have web links included in these notes by the time you're watching this, then write me a request to support what I'm saying. I'll connect you to resources to research. So. Sitting on clouds, playing harps, throwing crowns at the feet of Christ, feasting, singing, and flying around, that was the bulk of what I had learned in religion. If I, was, if I were raised in Islam, then I would be trying to get a supply of virgins. In the Eastern religions, by my guess, I would probably end up a dung beetle. It was, well, if I was blessed, then maybe I'd be a tree. Anyway, in the West, there have been a lot of of books and movies that try to offer a picture of what life after this age will be like. There's a movie starring Robin Williams, What Dreams May Come, and, um, ay ay. Oh, I forgot. There was another one that came to my mind, but it's gone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was the book and the movie, The Shack. They grasp for ideas, but in the end, what we grab onto is just a, as vapid as the pagan images of death and hell. Just more pagan images. It's just made-up crap that feels and sounds good. 
So my solution, a video divided in three parts to keep it manageable, where I just read verses and share my opinions. The verses do say what they say. They are true. What I say is my opinion, and you can laugh at those. But don't yell at me for what the Bible says. Just keep that in mind as we go. This first video will be ideas and verses meant to give you some idea about the existence God gives to those whom he, he gives faith and grace in this age. Those who are not part of the circumcision. They're off, they are often called the members of the body of Christ. There are very certain thoughts and ideas you will be given from the verses. The funny part is that these verses actually say what they say. They are incredible, except since they're in the Bible, they should be believed. They are credible. You'll hear them and stand in the place of believing them or being an unbeliever. They can be explained away, but what if you just believed God? Then something glorious happens to you. Again, you become a believer. Oh, by the way, religious people get lost in words sometimes. The linguistic divisions you need to keep in mind are literal versus figurative or, or metaphorical. A lot of people get lost when they think the two class divisions are literal and spiritual. Nope, nope, nope. If you don't recognize the very thing and that everything that God describes in the spiritual realm is in fact literal, then you think of the celestial realms as some misty, dreamlike place where reality is thin. Oh God, no! The spiritual realm is so much more full and deep and meaningful. Recall all the images and information that Moses used to make the tabernacle were based on the real thing. The tabernacle and temple were models of the real thing. Think about it. It's literal or metaphorical. And within those two divisions, you find the case of whether it's also physical or spiritual. So it could be literal, physical, literal, um, spiritual, metaphorical, physical, or metaphorical, spiritual. Anyway, I need to share one other item before I get to these verses. I wrote this message, including all the verses that I've included below, and each verse... I'd added a leading question. I, I start out with a question to get you set up for the verse. And I looked it over and I realized that I was leading your thoughts with the questions. That's not my intention. It was me trying to drag you to see what I wanted you to see. Oh, my bad. No way. Uh, the Spirit of God working through the Word of God, if He wants you, it's on Him to get you. I just share. I'm not going to be pulling you along in anything. So, I'm not even trying to argue. I'm just sharing stuff. Thusly, I've taken out all the framing questions. Now, what's really cool is some of these verses actually have built-in questions. You should consider that. Anyway, I'm just going to read the verses. You should read these verses on the screen to see the part I emphasized, or maybe read it in your own Bible to see, so you can trust it. So, for this video, again, I'm talking about the B group from earlier in the video. Those who are snatched away raptured in the Christian terms. I think it's harpazo or harpazo in the Greek. What's happening with them because of the faith they are given, because of their belief? So here's some verses. Ephesians 2, 6. But God who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you've been saved. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Jesus Christ. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Romans 8.29 And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, 
those he also called. Whom he called, those he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. 2 Timothy 2.12 This is a faithful saying, For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. 1 Corinthians 6, 3 Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? Do you not know that we shall judge angels how much more things that pertain to this life? Ephesians 1.4 Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame, before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love according to the good pleasure of his will. 2 Corinthians 5.20 And he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Colossians 3, 3-4 For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. 1 John 3.2 Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God, Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it's not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in himself purifies himself, just as he is pure. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 Peter 1, verse 12 The Spirit of Christ who was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that 
not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desired to look into. Romans 8, 20-22 For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption in the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the fruit, first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation labors and groans with birth pangs together until now. Romans 3, 21-22 By the deeds of the law, no flesh will be justified in the sight, but by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, and even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. For there is no difference, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. But now, the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all who believe. Romans 8.17 The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs. Heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9 But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Ephesians 6.12 Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand within, against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, 
against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all, to stand. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Philippians 3.20 For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the work by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly await for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Then I have two long sections, relatively long. These talk about the resurrection and the form of it, the, the manner of it. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. But I don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. But if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the chief angel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Then 1 Corinthians 15, 35 through 55. How were the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? O oh, thou fool! That which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare, bare grain. It may chance of wheat or some other grain, but God giveth it a body, as it hath pleased him, to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and terrestrial bodies, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. All of that to say, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It's sown in corruption, it's raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it's raised in glory. It's sown in weakness, it's raised in power. It's sown a natural body, it's raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And as it's written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As in the earthy, such are they also that are earthy, and as in heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. 
And we have been born, and as we have, and as we have born the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump. The trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory?